It's on. Gotta write that down. If you haven't already. What's going on, man? You know. This is your boy. You know who it is and what it is. Who is it? We coming live on March 9th. Biggie Day, give me the loot. You know, all the good classics that we was raised on. Biggie, give me one more chance. Niggas is mad. I get more butt than ashtrays. You dig? I get mine a fast way. Ski mass way. But, um, yeah, you already know it's a Biggie Day, March 9th. This is the day he died. I think this is a day to rejoice and also celebrate him, man. And, you know, the honor, the shit he brought to the game. Big was very influential mm-hmm. in this music shit. Um, he brought a lot. He brought the fat boys to the game. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? The black ugly niggas. Yes, he that did. That just was fresh. Justify. You know what I'm saying? That was mm-hmm. like Big's ever. Big gay the niggas that just ain't have a motherfucking chance. He gave them a chance. You know what I'm saying? So biggie, biggie. a lot of you ugly fat niggas <laughs> better respect that nigga, man. And show that nigga some love, man. <laughs> Cause it's a lot of you niggas out there, man. So, you know, it don't matter if you a fresh, fat, ugly nigga. You still know you fat and ugly. So, man, show some love to Big, man. First fat, ugly nigga to kick the fucking door down. Fuck bitches that we all want to fuck. Got money we all want to get. Was fresh how we all want to be fresh. So, you know, that shit says a lot about who he was and Mm -hmm. what he brought. And, um... One thing I want to say is that <clears throat> shout out to the nigga Puff, man. You know what I'm saying? For holding his head through all this shit and really getting along. You know, I don't know if people looked at the shit that been on Biggie just throughout of the years. You know, um, niggas need to put some respect on Puff's name. Because Puff could have folded after that shit. Mm. He could have folded his cars. He could have went and did some other shit. He could have felt, yo, I lost my right hand man in the fucking city. That was against us. Puff really had a bunch of reasons where he could have shut down and we would have understood. The man said he wanted to quit. You know what I'm saying? But he kept going. We watched him bring multiple fucking groups after groups after groups. Hits after hits after hits. Songs after songs after songs. So, you know, this ain't his day, but it's part of his day. You know what I'm saying? So I think definitely, man, shouts out to Puff. And all the shit he got going on and to the bad boy squad, to all the legendary little Kim, Lil C's, gotta, you know what I'm saying, D-Rock, motherfucking, um, everybody that Big was around. Because one thing it seemed about his team is that Big had the same fucking team. Mm-hmm. Like, throughout of all his pitches, you seen D-Rock, you seen Gutta, you seen Puff, you seen C's, you seen Lil Kim. That was the motherfucking crew. And up until that nigga died, that was the crew. After he died, that still was the fucking crew. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of us from that ever can't see certain rappers without thinking big. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you run into a Lil C's, you think big. When you run into Lil Kim, you think Notorious Kim. You know what I'm saying? Her whole motherfucking demeanor was Big's demeanor. You know what I'm saying? So, shout out to everybody. g Depp, everybody that was under Bad Boys. Except for French, you was never a real member. So I ain't shouting you out, but shout out to French. But you're not on this bad boy shit. What about Craig Mack? R.I.P. R.I.P. Craig Mack, man. Without Craig Mack, without Biggie, I don't know if it could have been a bad boy. Maybe somebody else could debate it. You know, shit's up for debate. But I really think if he ain't had that Big Mac, I think this shit was over. If it wasn't for Flavor in Your Ear, period, and everybody jumping on that remix... People thought that was big song. That was a Craig Mack joint, R.I.P. And everybody jumped on it. You had L.L., the man that says he's the GOAT on that joint, but that was still big song. I don't care what anybody says. Um, and the lady that's on the mic, you want to introduce yourself? Sure, I'm sorry. We just got right into big because he's the GOAT. I don't care. Um, Johnny. Johnny Tsunami, everybody's auntie favorite. Um, you can catch me on Nagatha Christie, just how it sounds. Machine Gun Johnny on Instagram. And who are you? Because you always say, you know what it is. Who are you? That's what I'm saying. They know who it is. They know who it is. <laughs> I ain't even got to say my name. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the real motherfuckers that show me love. 
Okay. Um, now nah, that song was big. Um, <clears throat> fucking big did take that song over. You really would have thought it was a big song. Um, flavor in your ear was very big. It was a big ass song. I can't lie. That shit was like big. You heard that shit in every whip. So like, what? um, I feel a butt coming on. When I was younger, I really wasn't the Craig Mack fan. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was more part of it because it was Bad Boys. You know what I'm saying? He was linked to Big and shit like that. So with Craig, like, I always fucked with the music. You know, in hindsight, that was the shit. But then, I think it was just so much street shit going on. You know, and music always back then in the 90s, depending on how you live. Mm-hmm. If you was a street nigga, you looked at shit a certain way and you listen to shit. <clears throat> if you was a nigga that got money, you heard shit a certain way. And then you just had the music had, you know, R.I.P., the nigga Yahoo. Um, he was a Craig Mack fan. Testify. But this motherfucker was a music fan. Mm-hmm. Like, with him, that's who introduced me to music beyond just what you like mm-hmm. or what you think this beat sound like. It was like, nah, nigga, listen to them. Like, you know, not to go on a tangent, but um, big ass shit with them boot camp clips. You know, Smith & Wesson. Like, I wasn't hip to them until Jamal started bringing these things. Like, yo, listen to this. Musicality. You know what I'm saying? Like, I fucking hated Keith Murray. <laughs> he loved Keith Murray. But it was the, the lyrics, though. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like with him, it wasn't who an individual was. So I think that's big. To really look at when it comes to Craig Mack and Biggie. And that's what was dope where, I, where everybody say Puff was a genius. Because he gave you both sides. If you wanted some street shit, you had Biggie. If you just wanted some good music, you had Craig Mack. So I think they both played their position and it was a perfect fit. It was. I often wonder. I need to do a little more research on how Craig Mack felt about it. I know it's Biggie Day and we winding down. It's about to be midnight and Biggie Day's about to be over. But... I'm going to look into that, how he felt about it and how that went. Because not only was Biggie first on the song, but that was his, um, I feel like that was his baby. Because that single dropped just before Ready to Die dropped. Just before. And nobody even remembers Craig Mack's album. Or the Flavor In Your Ear original song. Because Biggie came first and he came hardest on that song. You had LL Cool J. You had Busta Rhymes. I forgot about that. Some real heavy hitters on that song. And Biggie Shout came first. For sure. Busta. Nigga still. Rampage. Don't. Yeah, it was, some, it was some heavy hitters on that song. It definitely was for Big to stand out like that. Um, it just show you he stood out. Niggas is mad. I get more butt than ashtrays. <laughs> Amongst the great, he stood out. You know what I'm saying? Oh. And I think that was one of the shits that caught everybody's attention on that shit, too. I get more butts than ashtrays. Like, that was a classic line. Opening that, line. You know what I'm saying? The opening. And that's how motherfuckers used to judge you back then on your opening. Like, how you open that bottle? Like, did you really, you know what I'm saying, kill that shit or mm-hmm. you just walked in the room on that shit? And um, back then, what I do, like, when you hear sh- people on shit with big, they had to, like, adjust their flow. Like, you had to just play the game. come in there with that shit. Like, mm-hmm. yo, nah, with big, you had to really sit down, get your pen right, and because. Even if you think about some of the shit people's on with Big, it kind of brought the best out of people. You had to. You can't play no games with him. I know we talked about Flavor and Yeah. That is my favorite verse of Biggie ever. What's yours? If you had to pick one. My shit might be on um, the second joint off Ready to Die. What was it, Ready? Um, How to Rob? Wasn't that the first How to Rob? How to Rob. While I'm looking at that. I want to say it was How to Rob. But him with the little nigga on there went on. You know, Big was just ridiculous with that shit. I mean, that was hardcore rap. You know what I'm saying? That was... Big was saying shit niggas wasn't even thinking about saying. He was saying... Gully shit... 
when it wasn't even cool to say gully shit. Like a you lot of that shit, it. Big was saying niggas was censoring back then. Mm-hmm. Like that shit wasn't the the everyday. And I think that's something that all uh, <clears throat> people get fucked up with. Big people think Big was a just a writer, but Big set the trend in this shit. Like Big set how niggas writing. You know what I'm saying? Like and a lot of shit. Not to never take nothing from this man, cause this motherfucker is great and been greater since Big died. You know what I'm saying, the nigga Ho. But if you look at every song with Ho, he piggyback Big. Big always was the front runner of the song mm-hmm. on both Brooklyn's. You know what I'm saying? Um, Brooklyn's finest, honorable mention. But favorite I really, song. That's one of my favorite joints mm-hmm. too. Both of them. Mm-hmm. Um. One thing I did like about them two is they complimented each other's flow. Mm-hmm. Like, Hov and Big never tried to outdo each other. It was, nigga, we going hard for Brooklyn. And it was like, they both went hard. Like, even on their verses, it's not a, yo, he killed this nigga. Mm-hmm. It's just, my nigga, the, 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 the exercise they was putting in on that shit was crazy. It was definitely a back and forth. And if you I, get a chance, listen to Brooklyn's Finest 1 and 2. Please do. Why are you thinking about it? Please listen to just... And y'all play Monopoly with bullshit paper. We play Monopoly with real cash. You know what I'm saying? Listen to some of them flows. Go back and listen. That shit's going to put niggas on the game. Please do. I think the song you were thinking about was Give Me the Loot or Nah. Give Me the Loot. Okay. Favorite motherfucking big song might be my favorite big verse. Just it's verse and song, verse nice. and song. Like he was so raw on that shit. Like that was that shit you definitely didn't want your mother to listen to. Like you know what I'm saying? That wasn't that that bullshit big. Like and that's what I be telling niggas too. Back in the days, it was always an A side and a B side. Oh, yeah, there's no A's and B's nowadays. You know what I'm saying? So, A Was side, it bullshit, though? Was it bullshit? Or was it just A and B? What you mean? Like, you said the bullshit side. Like, because my two favorite, um, my favorite verse is Flavor in Your Ear Remix. That was, like, a, a major hit. My favorite song to hear from him is um, Story to Tell. That was a major, I would say, a major hit amongst us as a culture. Definitely. But Did it was. Did Story to Tell have a video? I don't think so. It should have been, but you know that was a real story. I don't think it, it wasn't because it was a real story. Remember Fat Joe told yeah, us? Fat Joe was just talking yeah. about that shit, too. So Plus, it was I, a lot of people talking about it. Right, and it, it's, it was a, a major, quote-unquote major hit. Not everybody knows about it, but that just speaks to his storytelling, his cadence, his lyrics. Like, the whole song, it was no hook, no structure it was just a legit story everything rhymed and everything made sense and it was very intricate even though it was a story but big was definitely one of them dudes <clears throat> big was definitely a motherfucker like definitely how Pac was you sit in a room mm-hmm. you gonna think about them lyrics them mm-hmm. lyrics just saying no like, play that back? like them shits that? at home. Them shits, yeah, really that. Yo, play that shit back. And we didn't have all this dumb shit like, yo, put it to 28 seconds. No, mm-hmm. you had to catch the motherfucking verse. Or you'll be done rewind the whole song. You know what I'm saying? So it was different playing in radio. So you know niggas was really rewinding radios and taping <laughs> shit off the radio. It was crazy. You know it was great when you... You hear something different every time, like a movie. You hear something different. This man came out when we were like, what, 12? So you hear something different when you're 12, and you keep listening over the years, and you're 15, and now you're 18, and now you're 20, and now we're 40. And you still hear something different every time. That shit's crazy to me. Can we talk about facts? I know we just jumped right into how great he was. No, but I want to ask you one thing, though. Yes. What would you say Big alone brought to the game? Real. And what I mean real is even though I I grew up around the way, 
I'm around the way filet, but I didn't, I was never a drug dealer. I wasn't shooting people, but I could relate to what he was saying. And he brought things that we saw and heard and felt that was not unheard of, but it was something that we needed that we didn't know we needed at the time. That is what I felt like his impact was. I definitely felt Big might have brought Kooji in the rap game. You mean Kooji just the brand or just being a fly nigga Kooji around the, the way? Brand. I want to say before that I've really never heard <clears throat> dudes going in about Kooji in general. Big talked about Kooji damn near his whole shit. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't even like it was something that just was in for a moment with him. Big was really a Koji fan. He was. I got my, my fingers up because he was. But I think you and I touched on something off camera. As far as him bringing to the light and bringing to wax things that we lived and experienced. But he just put it out to the masses. No, I that's what I said. Yeah. I don't think... He was the first nigga wearing it. He nope. was the first nigga to bring it to the industry. Like, there's a lot of niggas that was the first of bringing shit. Like, Hove was one of the first niggas on some platinum shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, not to say nobody in the world was wearing platinum, mm -hmm. but these are the people that exposed it to the massive of everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, before Big's Coogee lines, I wasn't seeing niggas in Coogee sweaters. But after that line, the motherfucking sweaters was legendary. Mm -hmm. You right now can get off on a Kooji. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Classic. You can bring a Kooji out there and there over any Gucci sweater, any Louis sweater, and that Kooji is shut all that shit down. Classic. That's why they call it the, um, <laughs> with your Bill Cosby sweater. Whatever you want to call it, it was still, like you said, it was still a thing. He just brought it. To our ears. In mass. And I think that's big. Because when you bring something in a mass. It's sort of like. You feel you heard? Brought this shit alive. I feel like I feel heard and seen. You know what I'm saying? Like. Me as a black man. I just like to give other black men. They flowers. Like if a motherfucker did something. I like to say. Okay you did that. I'm not a motherfucker that just want to be, nah, niggas was doing, nah, if you really did something, then you really did something, and I think we don't give each other that, the the credit of bringing shit to the light, regardless if niggas knew it, niggas wasn't on it, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, it's like, um. You think he got his flowers, I think he got his flowers while he was here, he was like a flash in the pan, like a, a real quick flash in the pan, but those couple of years that we had him in our ears while he was alive, I think that people did big him and give. It wasn't like you're nobody till somebody kills you. That's another track. But yeah, he was bigger after that. But I think that while he was still here, people definitely still gave him his flowers while he was with us for that just short period of time. What you think? I definitely don't think niggas gave big his flowers um, <clears throat> because. One thing about us, like I just was saying, it's hard to say you're great when you're here. It's hard for people to say that. Even when they feel you're great, it's just hard with, I think, us as black people telling another black person that is a lot, you, you're really great, you're something phenomenal. You know what I'm saying? Like, get past the special people. Because there's people that are special, but there's some people that's like top of the show. You know what I'm saying? And Big was one of them. Big was like, and he showed you that just out of like who he was, where he came from, everything that was put in front of him. And damn sure in the 90s, that wasn't what you thought a rapper looked like. Mm -hmm. Like Big <laughs> didn't have the, yo, I'm a rapper look. Big mm -hmm. had the nigga, I'm big. And that's what I'm saying. Like, one thing I give him, and I think why he celebrated, because he made a lot of that shit work without the crime. You know, classic story. I remember them always saying um, the shit about 
everybody moving and getting dressed and niggas all had gators and big gators wouldn't fit. And the nigga was fucked up. The nigga was heated. Yo, what the fuck, man? Like, why the fuck shit in my size always fucked up? Mm -hmm. And him and Puff laughing and talking. I think it was in the movie, too. Him and Puff laughing and talking about it. Puff like, man, slide them shits on, man. Let's go do this show. To where niggas ain't know, but this nigga had on some half his shoes. Performing mm -hmm. for niggas. You know what I'm saying? So... I like that he was one of them niggas. He made it work for the people. Yo, fuck it. I know they want this more than anything. You know what I'm saying? So I think that was real big of him. And it showed, like I say, who he was. Do you remember where you were when Ready to Die dropped? 94. Whether you was into it or not, do you remember or do you have to get into it and then you recall? No, I remember... Um that's probably like my beginning years of chilling on Floyd. Maybe it was chilling on Floyd, maybe like a couple months by that time when Ready to Die came out. So, 94, I was 13, you was 12. I was definitely in and out of town, but you were stationary. When it dropped, was that one of the things that? Maybe your OGs put you on to like you spoke on it before, or you just kind of drew to it. Oh, uh, R.I.P. The nigga Ant. R.I.P. Little young slime. Um, he was another nigga that had like a mixy ass music catalog. Um, so he bumped big hard, and you know when he bumped big. Um, you know it was other music going on so niggas was listening to other music but he more bumped it I think what really had me was when One More Chance came out and just motherfuckers just flocked to it. like you couldn't go nowhere without hearing that you couldn't be at a party a fucking anything a get together anything without hearing give me one more chance and that shit got played maybe 10 times mm -hmm. so after a while you had to look at him. And I think with myself, um, I looked at Big like Juicy and One More Chance. So I kind of was like, okay, he hot, whoever the dude is. But now, once you hit Ready to Die, the mm -hmm. whole, I, now yeah. you get a different big. Mm -hmm. You like, damn, that's homeboy? That made One More Chance? Mm -hmm. You don't even, nothing similar in his album. Especially when you turn that motherfucker on, because that shit put you on. That's because it was pretty genius to put those R and B beats that we grew up with, that his family grew up with, we all grew up with. He was still lyrical, he was still nice, but it was more palatable. I tell you one thing. To me, off top hearing it, Juicy was why. Oh, oh my god. Wow. Off top hand. Oh my god. Wait. Woo. Oh my gosh. I never forget Woo. seeing this shit on Rap City. I think it was Rap City. Probably. Wow. I think it was Rap City and K Boy. Mad niggas by the pool. This is in the end. Listen, I want motherfuckers to know. There really wasn't a motherfuckers knowing Puffy Hog. Like everybody. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew nothing. Knew. You didn't know nothing. There was no anything. social media. There was no instant information. So you saw like, what you saw. It was just a new video. On. Mm -hmm. So this is how I caught it. I didn't catch it like everybody was talking. Yo, Puffin, Biggie. No. The video played. I'm like, who the fuck <laughs> is this nigga? This nigga's biggest shit on this crazy ass R&B beat. You, he fucked me all up. I was all fucked up. But... As I got older, not even now, as I got over uh, a teenager listening to music, the motherfucking boys were some geniuses for that shit. That shit was probably the illest shit Puff could have did to set the record he was coming. That shit was a different, and that just showed you they was the hit squad. They was very different. Like, for Puff to pick this beat, mm -hmm. for Big to say, fuck it, I'm going to rap on this beat. Like, that was not his M.O., but fuck it, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go with this. You know, Puff is his finger. And alley. once again, man, I got to say, man, yo, Puff like a fucking beat guy, man. Like, yo, you, you got to. How the fuck did he see that? 
That man said he doesn't play any instruments, but he can hear things. He hears talent, and he knows music. How did he know this song with these fucking R&B hits is going to be it? Because he said Big laughed at that shit. He said a bunch of He didn't want to do it. Never mind laughed. He didn't want to do it. He said motherfuckers was looking at him like he was crazy when he brought that beat out. Niggas was like, yo, my nigga, this shit? That's my parents. And Juicy? that's what I'm saying. He did it. Young people, look up Juicy by him too, man. That's the original joint. That'll get a, a, a cookout going. And can you imagine this real, I mean a real street nigga, a real nigga. Like, I'm not rapping over that. And you want me to, nah. But he he followed his boy. He believed. And that's something I want to say. I don't know why, because that shit... I thought because you had the thing that... Exactly. Was, right. That's why I'm wondering, like, why the fuck would that have... You still recording? 